All right, we're continuing with examples of the intermediate value theorem. And here's the next one. Consider the function f of x equals secant x on the interval 0 to pi. So let's look at an example here involving a trig function. And you can check this. f of 0 is equal to 1, and f of pi is equal to negative 1. And we can see that on the calculator. You see here I'm in radian mode, and so if I type secant, and what is secant? Remember, secant is 1 over the cosine. So if I type 1 divided by cosine of 0 and hit enter, it's 1. And if I, if I type 1 divided by the cosine of pi, that will be the secant of pi. 1 divided cosine of pi is negative 1. Okay, so, so this is true. So consider this function, f of x equals secant x, on the interval 0 to pi. If we were trying to find uh, the zeros of the function, well, we know on the x-axis if it has... If we're looking at this interval 0 to pi, if it's 0, it has a value of 1, and at pi, it has a value of negative 1, then it must go through the x-axis somewhere between 0 and pi. So if you're given this question on a multiple choice test, and you're asked, does the function, and you're given this data here, does the function f of x have a 0 on this interval? And one of the answers is, yes, it does. It has a 0 on that interval and you mark that answer, you would in fact be wrong. So what's going on here? You might be thinking to yourself, wait a second, if it goes from a positive number up here to a negative number down here, doesn't it have to go through every value in between? So certainly there's a zero here, right? No, there's not. Remember the intermediate value theorem only applies to continuous functions. And what does the secant function look like? Remember this. Here's your your axes, if we imagine now the secant is the, the reciprocal of the cosine function. So if we make a little graph of the cosine function, which would look something like this, okay, the secant is the reciprocal of the cosine function, and it looks like this. It has an asymptote here and here. Okay, what I'm graphing in yellow is the secant function. And this is an x value of pi right over here. So notice, the secant function has a value of 1 right here. That is kind of like this point that we drew. And it has a value of negative 1 right here. That's kind of like this point. But it doesn't go from this point to this point in a continuous fashion. The secant function is not continuous. Therefore, the intermediate value theorem does not apply. So the point here is don't get tricked. A problem like this, you might set up a problem. You might see a problem set up like this where in, in a discussion of the inter intermediate value theorem. And you think, oh, yeah, it goes from 1 to negative 1. So on this interval from 0 to pi, it has to go through 0 like that. Well, it only has to if it's continuous. And the secant function, if you remember the shape of the graph, is not continuous. OK, next example. Show that y equals 2x to the fourth minus 6x cubed plus 3x squared minus 8x minus 11 has a positive root. Hmm. OK. I want to show that it has a positive root. Okay, this is a fourth degree function, which um, means it's going to have some kind of characteristic shape, like this, perhaps. And what we want to show is that on our x-axis, it crosses the axis somewhere over here where x is a positive number. It has some positive zero. So how do we show that? Well, watch this. Finding f of 0 is pretty easy. Imagine plugging in a 0 for x. Well, all of these terms with an x in them end up being 0. So this is just 0 minus 0 plus 0 minus 0 minus 11. So f of 0 is negative 11. And that's easy to find. So I'll plot a point down here. f of 0 is negative 11. And then remember that this is an x to the fourth function, which has this kind of characteristic shape. And I don't know exactly how the function wobbles around here, down in the interesting part of the function, but I know that if it's a fourth degree function and this lead term is positive, then it's going to be zooming up. 
I know the end behavior of a polynomial function says that the limit of this function as x approaches infinity equals positive infinity. Somewhere at some point as x gets big, this function has to be zooming up really high. So if it starts off here at, at a negative number, negative 11, and it goes up here eventually to positive infinity, or toward positive infinity, then there must be some point out here somewhere where x is positive where it has a positive zero. It's a polynomial function and it's continuous so it must go from here from this negative value over here somewhere up to these infinitely large values at some point and it has to cross through a y value of zero in the process. So we have there, therefore demonstrated that it has a positive root. If you didn't want to recognize the end behavior of the function, you could just calculate some x value. Pick a big number, and it doesn't have to be really big because these, these functions grow really fast. You could pick a number such as f of 4 and calculate f of 4. If you put in 4 for x here and here and here and here and do the arithmetic, you find that f of 4, for example, is 133. Or you could trace that on the calculator. So you could set it up as a standard intermediate value problem you could say at 4 here and this is not to scale but that's okay at 4 here we're at a value of 133 so if if x goes from 0 to 4 and in the process the y values as we move along this curve the y values go from negative to positive then it must go through 0 either approach is okay recognizing a positive number at some specific point or recognizing a trend toward infinitely large positive values as x gets, gets large. Either way, we'll clinch the argument. The function must have a positive root. And one more example, this one is similar, show that the equation e to the x equals 4 cosine x has at least one positive solution. And we can do this with the intermediate value theorem. I'm going to take this take this equation. Well, before I write f of x, let me take the equation and just rearrange it. I'm going to write it. I'm going to put this e to the x over here, and say 4 cosine x minus e to the x must equal zero. And I'm going to write this function as this expression: f of x is 4 cosine x minus e to the x. And I'm going to think about these functions, or think about the zeros of this function. So if this is f of x, then it's pretty easy to calculate f of 0. That's going to be 4 times the cosine of 0, which is 4 times 1, minus e to the 0, which is 1. That gives us 3. f of 0 is 3. So this function, at an x value of 0, it has a y value of 3. So let me just take note of that. So what I need to show then, if I want to show that it has at least one positive solution, I need to show that somewhere out here it has a negative value. If it has a negative value somewhere out here and it's a continuous function, which it is, then it must go through a y value of 0 on the way from here to here. So we want to show that it has some negative value somewhere else. So let's pick a value that's fairly easy to calculate, and I'm going to pick pi over 2 f of pi over 2, and I do that because if we put in 4 cosine of pi over 2 minus e to the pi over 2, that might not look easy to calculate, but watch this. Cosine of pi over 2 is what? Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So this goes away. That whole term goes to 0. And this is just negative e to the pi over 2. And I don't know off the top of my head what number this is, but I know that it is negative. So I know that when I get out here to an x value of pi over 2, that I'm down here to a y value of this, negative e to the pi over 2, which is definitely negative. And this goes, so this function ha at some point, and I don't know exactly how it curves in here. I haven't thought that through yet, but I don't need to just to answer this question. And going from here to here, going from this x value to this x value you imagine moving along the curve from there to there and it must go through all of the y values in between 3 and negative e to the negative pi over 2 so it must go through a y value of 0 there is a point is an x value somewhere in that interval where this function equals 0 
which means that is the x value that satisfies this equation and would therefore satisfy that.